Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, so that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The people's return to Judah after the exile was marred by economic and political troubles. Nevertheless, the prophet declares, Jerusalem and Judah will be restored. God will rejoice over Jerusalem as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, and the people are called to the celebration. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 62, beginning at the first verse. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The congregation at Corinth experienced division as people were comparing their spiritual gifts, thinking some to be superior to others. Paul invites this fractured community to trust that God's Holy Spirit has gifted them all perfectly for their mission together. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by one Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. 
Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from the word revealed to us, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This season of Epiphany, we are focusing on God's revelation, God showing us who Jesus is. It started with the star leading the wise men to Jesus, and this is why we have left up the greens hanging in the church with the stars on them. And then it moved to the heavens opening at Jesus' baptism with the dove descending and God declaring, this is my son, the beloved. Now we hear another surprise, another revelation, this time at a wedding in Cana. I was reminded of a story I came across about being surprised, about trust being revealed, about love showing through. Had it not been for a confident wife, Sophia, we might not have listed among the great names of literature the name Nathaniel Hawthorne. When Nathaniel, a heartbroken man, went home to tell his wife that he was a failure and that he had been fired from his job in a custom house, she surprised him with an exclamation of joy. Now, she said triumphantly, you can write your book. Yes, replied the man with sagging confidence, and what shall we live on while I am writing? And to his amazement, she opened a drawer and pulled out a substantial amount of money. Where on earth did you get that? He exclaimed. I have always known you were a man of genius, she told him. I knew that someday you would write a masterpiece. So every week out of the money you gave me for housekeeping, I saved a little bit. So here is enough to last us for one whole year. From her trust and confidence came one of the greatest novels of American literature, The Scarlet Letter. Today's gospel reading shows us surprise, trust, and love showing through. It all starts with a wedding. We do not know who the couple is. Somehow they knew Jesus and his family, and he scored an invitation for his disciples too. So we know that they have a relationship with Jesus. They probably do not know him as the son of God, probably more like the son of the carpenter from down the street. But they were pretty close though, because Jesus' mother knew something of the wedding plans, and she was part of the food preparation. At least she was aware of what was going on when the wine ran out. And Mary was quite upset when that happened. And knowing Jesus had the power to do miracles, she went to Jesus to inform him. She wants him to do something about it. Maybe not perform a miracle, but the couple would definitely have been embarrassed if they ran out of wine in the middle of the party. And Mary knew Jesus could help somehow. But Jesus really is not having his mother's concern. He does not seem to want to get involved. He replies, my time has not yet come. Jesus has a real plan for ministry. He makes it clear to the disciples repeatedly. And this happens at the very beginning of his ministry. So he's also setting up expectations with his own mother. But almost ignoring her son, Mary instructs the servants to listen to Jesus. There is a level of trust here that everything is going to work out. And Jesus relents to his mother. He has the water purification jars filled to the brim, and he sends water turned to wine to the steward. And the banquet now has more wine than they could probably drink in a week, somewhere between 120 and 180 gallons of wine. And it's the best wine that could possibly be had. And that was the miracle, that he surprised the wine steward with excellent wine. His mother and his disciples came to trust him that Jesus was going to provide for them when they needed it. And he revealed his glory and showed his love. And he did this sign to show that he could do miracles. 
It is referred to as the first miracle. Something kind of stupid, maybe even a little bit silly, but it reveals a lot about God to us. Just as the story about Sophia Hawthorne showed us the depth of her trust and love for her husband, this story shows us the depth of trust and love that we can put in God. Life is hard. We've been through a lot. And maybe it's your personal life. Maybe it is life here at the church. Maybe it is life as a community. It has been a hard couple of years. And like Mary, we are waiting, yearning, asking God to perform a miracle for us. And Jesus reveals that he is present with us and will continue to be with us and provide for us. And will do all of these things in surprising ways, giving us more than we could possibly imagine. Better wine than we've ever had. God's glory has been revealed to us through the work of his son, Jesus Christ. And in his word and in his sacraments, God uses ordinary things like water and the word or each one of us to perform miracles. Showing us that heaven can be revealed here on earth and we can be prepared for the great wedding feast to come. We can work to show God's love here on earth as we trust his promise to be with us forever. For he has demonstrated a deep love for us, giving his life, going to the cross. But in our trust, just as the women trusted, we can be surprised that even in death, God's love can shine through. The empty tomb, like the wine at the wedding, are signs to strengthen our faith. God's love has been revealed. It does not mean that this life will be easy. I'm sure Mary did a whole lot of fretting about the dwindling wine supply at the wedding, just like Nathaniel Hawthorne did a whole lot of fretting about how he will provide for his family. But God still provided using ordinary things. And we need not worry about God being with us in this life. And we can prepare ourselves and our world for the real wedding banquet to come that God has invited us to be with him forever and has revealed what is to come bit by bit as we wait for the fullness which is to come. Amen.
of God, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your Church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policy makers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. Faith, God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your Spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. 
Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen.
Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.